Hello, everyone. Today, our topic is malignant pleural effusion. On the left hand side is a normal lung. It is covered by pleura, which is a double layer membrane covering the lung. And normally, there shouldn't be more than 10 cc of fluid or water in the pleural cavity. Malignant pleural effusion is caused mostly by cancer cells present in the pleural cavity. As the result, the pleural cavity is filled up with fluid, and this fluid causes the lungs to collapse. To further explain this, the pleural fluid is formed from the vessels, which are in the red dot in this image, close to the outer and inner membranes of the lung. This fluid after formed is then reabsorbed into these vessels and the leftover fluid exits through the lymphatic drainage spots which are in blue in this picture on the outer membrane. When cancer cells spread to the pleura or the outer membrane of the lungs, it will block up the lymphatic drainage spots, thus prevent the exit of the fluid. These cells can also produce certain substance to increase the creation of the fluid. Having pleural effusion, you may have difficulty with breathing when you walk, so you may prefer sitting than other physical activities. You may also cough and have chest pain. And if there is a lot or liters of fluid in your chest, you may be coming to the emergency room because of extreme shortness of breath. So how common is malignant pleural effusion? It is very common. It occurs in 90% of the patients with mesothelioma, 30% of patients with breast cancer, 30% of the patients with lung cancer, and 20% of lymphoma patients. It also has a very high recurrence rate of 50% even after the initial drainage. Treatment of pleural effusion should focus on improvement of the symptoms, the quality of life of the patients, and protection of their lung function. The question that comes up very frequently is, can systemic chemotherapy treat malignant pleural effusion without any intervention or drainage? According to the European Respiratory Society guideline in 2018 review, there have been some small studies suggesting an improvement of the pleural effusion with chemotherapy in lymphoma and small cell lung cancer in a number of patients. However, the evidence for systemic chemotherapy without any interventional pleural procedures is still not convincing for other type of cancers. So is drainage always needed? It depends on the patient's symptoms, the overall health condition, the prognosis of the patient, and also in the consideration of the risk of unexpandable lung or trapped lung. Most of the time, if the patients have symptoms, the answer is yes. If they do not have symptoms, you still need to have pleural fluid follow up closely as the risk of unexpandable lungs for unresolved pleural effusion could be present. The most common treatment option is long-term drainage by pleural catheter. And this catheter is a soft, small, long catheter that inserts into the chest to drain the fluid. The catheter will then be buried under the skin to prevent the risk of infection. The catheter will be covered by a dressing, and most of the patients maintain their regular activities without any limitation with the catheter. They can also take a shower, however, it is not advised to immerse the body in the water and do activities such as swimming. After the catheter is placed, the patient is advised to drain the catheter every day to optimize the resolution of the fluid because there is a higher likelihood of resolution of pleural fluid with daily drainage. This is a very well-tolerated procedure with improvement of symptoms in many patients and quote-unquote pleurodesis, which is the resolution of pleural effusion, occur in up to 60-70% to 70 of the patient within 6 months. However, common risks are infection, which occur in 10% of the patients and usually treatable. And then there's also a risk of bleeding as well, um, as with other procedures. Other treatment option is called quote-unquote pleuridesis procedure. 
For this procedure, the doctor will instill a medication or spray a medication into the pleural cavity to activate the pleural membrane to stick against to each other to prevent pleural fluid to reaccumulate. This procedure may also include placing a catheter, but in only about a few weeks instead of months. This procedure is well tolerated and improves symptoms and also has a very high success rate with the resolution of malignant fluid effusion from 72 to 93 percent of the time in a short period of time. Usually after the procedure, most of the patients experience some pain because of the activation of the pleura to prevent the recurrence of the pleural effusion. The pain is usually controllable and it should go away within a few days. Thank you for watching. This is for general education purpose only. Please discuss with your doctor about your questions.